I want to start today with one of this country's most canny and astute investors, John Wiley. The former boss of Lazard in Australia and the co-creator of Carnegie Wiley now heads to Nara Capital. Its long-term value fund is unusual, for it normally has only between six and nine stocks in it, but they're actively managed, like a private in equity investor would. Now, this week, Wiley wrote a scathing letter to one of those companies, Lendlease, Australia's iconic property owner and developer. Developer. It's redeveloped Barangaroo in Sydney, the Docklands in Melbourne. It built the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, then the tallest in the world, and the Tate Modern British Museum in London. There's also the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York, and go back far enough, even the Sydney Opera House. But Wiley says if things don't change and fast, then Lendlease might not survive. And this week late, Lendlease brought in the bankers to think about Wiley's suggestions and maybe make those changes. I caught up with the veteran investor this week. We think Lendlease is facing uh, fundamental questions about its future, Ross. Um, it's a company undoubtedly with, with an illustrious history, uh, but it needs to have a great future. And, it's, and the future of, of any company, uh, this company in particular, is, is not assured. Um, you know, they're, they're operating in uh, very capital intensive, very competitive international markets. Uh, with a lot of new competitors, large competitors, and um, you know they're a relatively small, mid-sized Australian company, and uh, we believe that uh, Lendlease has become, over time, it's become unfocused uh, in terms of where its real competitive advantage is and right to win, and we believe it's uh, you know operating on four continents uh, in three different industries, in a whole range of of quite disparate business activities in many respects. Uh, has not been a formula for success, and it shows in the share price. And that share price, which we are going to show people, is down more than 30% over the past three... Rather, more than 50% over the past three years, which obviously is disappointing to investors. Just as an activist investor, is it easy to send a seven-page letter outlying all your ideas and thoughts for Lend-Lease? Or is it easier and simpler just to walk away and sell the shares? Well, look, our modus operandi as an investor, Ross, is uh, we like to engage very constructively with companies. Um, we think it's uh, really good and healthy for there, there to be a democratic debate, a public debate between uh, public companies and their owners. We think that's a good thing. It happens in every other walk of life. Why doesn't it doesn't happen in the business world? And, you know, there's this whole narrative going on about our highest quality Australian public companies disappearing into private ownership, They're being owned by offshore private equity funds and their limited partners. And, and that reduces investment choice for Australian investors. And so uh, we're proudly at the vanguard of, of uh, trying to invest in a constructive way with public companies, um, uh, putting forward ideas in the spirit of democratic debate and, and uh, where we think that uh, you know, companies do have the opportunity to improve. We think that's a good thing for the companies. Uh, we think it's a good thing for Lend-Lease in this situation and we think it's a good thing for the Australian market and for Australian investors. So you say in this letter to Lend-Lease that it should get out of the international construction industry. We know there are pressures right around the world in construction. Uh, we know that there is a fundamental issue in terms of the number of collapses even here in Australia. Is that the reason or is it because you don't see a future for that style of business for a company of lend lease size? Lendlease uh, has a very successful construction business in Australia and it's part of this integrated business model that they have of construction, development and investment. Uh, but internationally, they, they've done a lot of third-party construction work and it is the absolute definition of running very fast to stand still at best. Uh, we think over the last six years the numbers say that they've, they've uh, taken on something like $33 billion worth of revenue in the construction business and they've produced, best case, about $170 million worth of profit. And that would be before all of the internet, all of the costs that they've got internally uh, in risk management and monitoring and compliance, all the board discussions and uh, just the sheer governance of, of the risks that go with, uh, with the construction business internationally. And so we do have a view that they, they should get out of the international construction business. Um, they, we don't have a, an issue with the, the construction business in Australia. Uh, they do a very good job, and then that can be a, a leader for interesting development projects here in Australia. You mentioned before their, their security price. Um, 
you know, the, the security price today is almost 30% less than what it was 30 years ago. Now, no company can succeed like that. You know, it's, it is, particularly in a capital intensive industry like this one, it's absolutely fundamental that you have a very competitive cost of capital. And, it, and the most competitive cost of capital starts with a well performing security price. And there's no getting around. You know, I played a lot of sport when I was young, and, and uh, people used to say, go look at the scoreboard. And the, and the scoreboard is clear. Now, this company needs change and it needs fundamental change. OK, so one of the fiercest criticisms in here that you have is a culture does not enable success. And you say people dealing with the company and former company insiders routinely describe the culture as bureaucratic, arrogant, top-heavy, risk-averse and siloed, with far too many management layers, international committee meetings and even cases of public infighting between divisions. Um, there could be no greater criticism of an organisation than to target its culture. Look, th those sorts of things are hard for uh, company uh, directors to hear, um, but that's a role that people like us from the outside, you know, we're invested here. We've got $150 million shareholding in this company. We want to see Lendlease succeed. You know, Lendlease is a company with a great foundation to it and a great capacity to succeed. But in part because of this global expansion, it, it really has built up this culture within the company um, that, you know, all of those words were words that were said to us by either former company insiders or by people dealing with the company. People say routinely they show up to meetings with Len Lease and there, might, there could be 10 or 20 people there and no one's clear on who's got accountability. Uh, it's very bureaucratic. And, uh, you know, even the word arrogant has been mentioned to us, and, and that's not a word that you like to use lightly. But, um, you know, we think that there really is a need for a cultural reset in, in the company. And, uh, you know, it, it's such an incredibly important enabler of success, of you know, business success in any business today, to, to get a, a positive culture, to get a high-performing culture, a culture of accountability, and a, a lean, efficient effective culture and um, you know the board and and uh, the CEO are doing their best uh, to try to drive a performance based culture in this company we we don't doubt that uh, but we think this needs to go further and, and harder and faster all right so the future for lend lease if this change that you're recommending does not occur in your mind what is it well look we've put out these views Ross uh, with a view as I said to contributing to debate. We think we, we're quite happy to lead a public debate about uh, where this company goes. We think there, there is a very interesting argument about potentially demerging the international business operations into a separate vehicle and, and focusing, refocusing Lend Lease on Australia and, and maybe Singapore, where they seem to have a good business. And uh, it, it we'll be very interested to see, obviously, in the Investor Day coming up next month, uh, how the company responds to that suggestion and uh, where they propose to take the company strategically. You are an activist shareholder, but not in the way that activist shareholders are perhaps acknowledged these days, where they drop a bombshell report like this one, but they're also short selling at the same time. And we've seen that in a number of Australian companies and overseas companies as well. You are a long-term investor, that's what you'd prefer to be, in Lend Lease, but you're also an activist shareholder. Is this what more shareholders, um, such as Tanara, but even super funds, is this what they should be about? Well, uh, look, the term activist has got a whole series of emotional connotations to it uh, from some of the uh, behaviours that have been seen overseas. We say, look, we're proudly an active shareholder. We, we're a highly engaged uh, active shareholder. We try to be a constructive shareholder in, in public companies. We think the, the tone of what we've had to say to Lend Lease is, uh, is, is very reasonable and, and well considered and, and argued. Um, we say, well, what's the opposite of being an active shareholder, an inactive shareholder? Uh, we don't think it's good for investment portfolios for them to be entirely passive. You know, who is going to be providing the input from the company owners to company boards? Uh, company boards can't live in, in, a, in, a, in an isolated echo chamber of just listening to themselves. It's good to have engaged shareholders for, for companies. And uh, so that's what we unambiguously aspire to do, and we think that's a really good and positive thing for the, for the equity markets. Uh, we absolutely unambiguously do not do short selling. Uh, we think that's a, that is a whole different category of investing that uh, we have no interest in doing. John Wiley, great to have you on the program. Many thanks for your time, and I look forward to doing it again sometime soon.
Thanks, Ross. See ya.